Hey, I'm Edge I'm from Deakin University, um, and today I'm here to present on a platform for semantic integration of heterogeneous central sources. This work is funded by the Australian Office of National Intelligence. So I'm going to start off by giving a brief overview of the project goal. I'll talk a little bit about background for um, other systems that uh, represent its data, um, such as the W3C, Semantic Sensor Network Ontology, and a little bit about our smart builds. And then finally, I'm going to talk about our solution, uh, the signal knowledge graph. So the goal of this project is to build a platform to be able to integrate uh, lots of different kinds of sensor sources that you might have in intelligence. So there's our public information, uh, such as Twitter or other social feeds, um, visual information, uh, such as objects recognized in video footage, um, and also uh, different kinds of sounds that you might pick up by microphones or other sensors, and potentially also chemical sensors. So the idea is we uh, want to be able to take all these different uh, kinds of sensor sources and be able to use that uh, to make an inference of what's going on. Um, for today's presentation, um, I'm going to focus mainly on sound. But keep in mind the techniques are general, so this could potentially be able, this could potentially be applied to any kind of sensor data um, or multiple kinds of sensor data at the same time. Um, and then what we want to do is um, make an inference of uh, what's going on. So um, perhaps there's some sort of an attack, and also how confident we are in that prediction. So it's not enough to just uh, integrate lots of data into the same format. Um, in order to help a human um, sort of sift through that deluge of data, uh, we want to really understand, given that data, uh, what's the most likely cause, how confident we are in that. So um, breaking down that goal, uh, to be able to infer the underlying cause of observed signals, um, we need three things. Uh, firstly, uh, we need some sort of model of the uh, sensor network. And I'm going to talk a little bit about existing uh, standards for that. We need some sort of model of the building uh, that those sensors are observing. And finally, uh, what I'm going to try and convince you of today is we also need some sort of model of the signals. So it's not enough to just know uh, what the sensors are and where they're located. We also need to understand something about uh, what signals those sensors are listening for and what could possibly cause those signals. So um, starting off, um, this is uh, taken from the W3C, Semantic Sensor Network Ontology Standards. Um, used to represent uh, sensor data. Uh, so we have some kind of sensor um, is associated with some sort of observations, uh, some date and some result. Uh, so for example, a particular reading of temperature. Um, the nice thing about this uh, standard is it goes beyond uh, just representing the data to a little bit about what that data represents and what sensor type captured it. So, for example, you can see the relation there at the top. Uh, a sensor observes some observable property. So this is used to capture a little bit about the semantics of the sensor. So, for example, a temperature sensor would be observing for temperature signals. Uh, you could have one observing for air humidity. Um, in our case, uh, focusing on sound, uh, we might have a sensor listening for particular categories of sound, such as smashing glass or explosions. Um, so hopefully uh, this gives you the idea. It's not enough to just capture the data. Um, we need to capture what that data represents, what types of sensors were involved, and ideally a little bit about um, what kinds of signals those sensors are monitoring for. Um, moving on to representing uh, the building or the environment. Um, in this case, we have a simple model of a building. On the left, we've got a dining room. On the right, we've got a conference room um, and a microphone. Um, but at the moment, these are all just words. They mean nothing to a machine. So uh, what ontologies allow us to do um, 
there's a few for uh, smart buildings, uh, such as W3C Building uh, Topology Ontology, uh, BOP, um, or Real Estate Core, which is what I'm using here. We can uh, start to represent uh, what these uh, things represent. So dining room one is a type of dining room. Uh, the conference room is a type of conference room, and we might have other conference rooms throughout the building. And the uh, microphone is a type of sensor. Um, and then being an ontology, we can link these things up. So for example, a window is a kind of asset, it's located in a room, and it's a small part of the building. So uh, what this allows us to do um, is reason a little bit more about uh, what might occur. So for example, if you were to see a fork in a or a knife in a dining room, that's probably to be expected. But if we were to pick up a knife in a conference room, then that would be an indication that perhaps something suspicious is going on. So um, I've covered existing standards for how we can model sensors and how we can model buildings or in the environments. Uh, but what I'm try gonna try and convince you of today is we also need to model um, something about uh, the signals, uh, how they relate to the sensors and what are the possible underlying causes of those signals. So as an example, uh, here we have a human intelligence officer. And let's say they're listening uh, to a feed from a microphone sensor, and it picks up something that sounds like sort of smashed glass. So they might reason, perhaps someone's tried to break in through a window, um, and that's what's led to the sound. Or they'll um, almost subconsciously uh, reason about other kinds of causes. So perhaps there's a party going on, um, someone was carrying a tray of glasses in the dining area and they dropped it, and that led to a uh, smash glass sound. Um, so a human intelligence officer is going to take everything they know and the context of the scenario into account um, in order to uh, think about what's the possible underlying cause of what's going on. Unfortunately, uh, when it comes to machines, um, they don't really have any of that common sense uh, that a human intelligence officer would. So, for example, there are machine learning models that can operate on sound uh, signals. Uh, one I've been playing with is uh, Yamnet. Um, it's trained on a corpus of uh, sound from YouTube videos uh, called AudioSet um, in order to recognize um, different classes of sound uh, given an audio snippet. Um, or if you want, you can run this in real time, um, so it'll be continuously classifying um, what's uh, going on. Uh, so for example, uh, given an audio snippet, um, it might say it's an explosion, glass, uh, speaking, um, frog's another category that's meant to be able to pick up on. Um, but the question is, uh, what next? So say it picks up on the sound of glass, um, what do we do, um, particularly given in taking into account uh, that machine learning models uh, particularly are uh, always 100% uh, accurate. Um, so as you can see on the right over there, um, I was um, trying a JavaScript version of this model um, on my phone, um, and it was picking up my voice as a frog. Um, so clearly these uh, models aren't 100% accurate. Um, so the problem is, uh, without any kind of understanding of uh, the possible underlying causes or the context, um, these machine learning models um, are always going to pick up problems positives, um, which means we still need to escalate it to a human intelligence officer to decide what's going on next. What we really want to do um, is to be able to sort of inform that model to take into account everything we know um, in order to be a little bit more intelligent in uh, what it surfaces as the underlying cause. So um, moving on to our solution, uh, which I'm calling signal knowledge or signal KG. The idea is to be able to model our uh, what uh, signals you might expect the sensors to pick up and the um, underlying causes of those signals. So we can allow machines to reason hopefully a little bit more intelligently. Uh, so some kind of entity such as a human performs some sort of action such as smashing through a glass window. Uh, this creates uh, some sort of signals. So for example, the sound of smash glass or um, in the case of movement, uh, you might have infrared signals. These get picked up by some sort of sensor 
and the sensor implements some sort of classifier. So for example, the YAMnet model we uh, mentioned before to pick up a certain category of sound. Um, the actions um, occur on some sort of class. So uh, in the case of smashing a window, that would only occur on windows. Uh, dropping a tray of glasses is most likely to occur in the dining room. Um, also, signals uh, can be attenuated by various objects in a building or environment. So, for example, uh, sounds going to be attenuated by windows or walls. Um, in the case of vision, it's going to be completely blocked by walls, but will still be able to pass through windows. So, uh, to make it a little bit more concrete, uh, here's how we might apply it. Um, an attacker can perform some actions, such as breaking the window creating this um, sound of broken glass. Um, an employee uh, might accidentally drop a tray of glasses in the dining room, uh, which also uh, relates, causes a uh, glass related sound, so uh, the sound of smashed glass. Now the issue is, um, unless you've trained a machine learning classifier um, on a lot of data and labeled it in a very detailed level, um, it's unlikely to be able to distinguish between these different uh, kinds of uh, glass smashing sounds. Uh, so for example, uh, YAMNET, which we mentioned before, um, it does have a category for glass related sounds, um, but it's probably not gonna be able to pick up um, on a more detailed uh, level than that, other than to say it's some sort of glass smashing sound. Um, and then uh, glass related sounds itself was under that category of sounds. So we can sort of have a hierarchy here of uh, the different kinds of signals and subcategories. So uh, what we can then do is take the signal knowledge graph at the top there and link it up with our model of the buildings and the sensors. So for example, breaking a window um, can occur on any of the windows in the building um, and dropping a tray of glasses is most likely to occur on dining rooms. And then our microphone there is linked up to say that it observes uh, glass related sounds using a particular type of glass. Um, so the purpose of all this um, is once we've linked up our model of the building and the sensors uh, to the signal knowledge graph, which describes the different signals involved and what the possible underlying causes of them, um, is hopefully we can reason a little bit about uh, what's going on given the sensor data. So to do that, uh, currently we take um, our model of the building there and the sensors and the signal knowledge graph and then use that to generate um, a Beijing network as shown on the right. Um, so you can see on the right there, we've got, the, um, you can sort of see the mapping. We've got the employee uh, dropping a tray of glasses or the attacker breaking through the window as the causes. Uh, this uh, results um, in some sort of uh, signal. And then um, that signal, uh, depending on how far the source is from the sensor and if uh, there's any intermediate objects such as windows or walls in between that might block it, it results in a received uh, signal with some strength um, and probability depending on those factors. Um, and then finally, um, given the rece um, received signal, uh, what's the chance that uh, the sensor running some classifier is actually going to pick it up. So um, as mentioned before, um, machine learning models aren't 100% accurate. So even if the signal reaches the sensor um, at a high strength, it's not necessarily going to be uh, classified correctly. Um, so what we can now do um, is condition that Bayesian network on um, our observed uh, sensor data. Um, so I'm not going to go into the details of how Beijing networks work, um, but the way I like to think of it is, say we were to run a thousand uh, simulations, um, of one of employees only, one of attackers only, um, and some with a combination of employees and attackers. Um, under each scenario, um, how likely is it uh, that we'd observe the sound of glass? And then we sort of filter to just the scenarios um, that did result in a glass-related sound um, in order to determine the relative probabilities of the underlying causes. So in this case, um, given that we've uh, um, picked up a glass-related sound by the sensor, um, we can see that um, the network's telling us that there's a large chance, a 98% chance, um, that an attack is present. 
um, but it could have also been an employee. It's just unlikely um, because it's much more, if an attacker's present, they're likely to break into a window and the sensor was near that window uh, as compared to say dropping a tray of glasses, which is fairly rare to start off with. And even if it happens, um, the dining room in this scenario is far enough away from the sensor that it's unlikely uh, to trigger a false positive. Um, that was a simple scenario, uh, but it can get more complex. Uh, so for example, this scenario is looking at um, adding a camera uh, that might pick up um, uh, weapons such as a knife in video footage. Uh, you might be wondering uh, why do we need the signal knowledge graph rather than just creating the Bayesian network in the first place? Um, and the answer is the idea of the signal knowledge graph is to be able to represent things at quite a high level. So the idea that an attacker can break in through a window and might be carrying some sort of raw weapon. Uh, whereas the Bayesian network is specific to a particular type of building. So uh, given uh, all the objects, so all the windows and all the dining areas and all the other rooms in the building, uh, what's the set of all the possible actions that occur? And um, given all the sensors in that building, uh, what's the probability that all those sensors could be triggered? Um, and then we can do an inference for that particular building given our sensor data, what's going on. Uh, so the idea is uh, we can take a high level uh, knowledge graph uh, that can cover multiple buildings, and then we can generate with what could potentially be a quite complex Bayesian network specific to a particular scenario. Um, we're not just limited to smart buildings. Um, this is a screenshot taken from a traffic scenario where we've got a dangerous driver, um, various traffic sensors that can pick up their movement. Um, there's also uh, surveillance cameras which may capture them performing uh, dangerous driving. Um, so in terms of challenges and next steps, um, an issue with our current approach is we still need to specify prior probabilities of uh, different attacks. Uh, so for example, uh, given an attacker's present, how likely are they to try and break in through the window as opposed to some other method? Now, the issue with this is an attack is not necessarily going to do what we expect them to do. And in fact, the attacks are adversarial, so they're going to try and take advantage of whatever system we have. So um, in future, we're planning to look at a more game theoretic perspective, where instead of trying to model exactly what an attack is going to do, we model their high level goals and then try to uh, predict what they might do given that they want to achieve those goals while avoiding detection. But at the same time, um, they might still not have perfect information of where all the sensors are located. The second issue is that the attack space is very large. So even for our simple uh, building scenario, they're not necessarily going to break in through the window. They could come in through the roof. They could impersonate an employee and come in through the front door. Um, or there could be a movie playing in the background, which might have the sound of gun throats leading to false positives. Um, so there's always going to be um, novel forms of an attacks that we haven't anticipated. So there needs to be some sort of a feedback system where we can adapt the graph um, to uh, take into account these new attacks uh, so that we can detect them in the future. Okay, um, so thank you for listening. Uh, if you're interested to learn more, uh, we've got a paper, Signal KG Towards Reasoning About the Underlying Causes of Sensor Observations, um, which has been accepted into this year's International Semantic Web Conference um, and is on archive there. Um, or feel free to shoot me an email at asimmons.deacon.edu.au. Thank you.